This week, we're going to start with uniform circular motion. So in this course, rather than thinking about things translating across, we're going to think about things moving in a circle. If I had to give you a definition of uniform circular motion, I would just say moving in a circle at constant speed. So we're not speeding up around the circle, we're not slowing down, we're just moving around uniformly. So when you start to study circular motion and rotational motion, it's often confusing. And I think part of the reason is we always go straight to velocity and straight to acceleration and straight to forces and centripetal acceleration and all this stuff. But we skip the way you would normally start. How we started linear kinematics was with position. So we need to start our work on circular and angular motion with angular position. So to get started with that, I'm going to introduce you to a new member of the demos, and this is Sal. So Sal is another sphere, and I'm going to stick Sal on this comically oversized lecture timer here, like this. And I'm going to get it moving like that. So there you can see Sal is executing uniform circular motion. Now let's think about Sal's position on the clock. So if we had to give a definition, I would say how far around the circle. In, uh, we usually represent it with a theta in degrees. Okay. So if we were going to start representing this mathematically, we would first want to draw a circle. And let's see, so the ability to draw a circle is something that there are contests for. I'm not a winner of these contests, clearly, there. Um, when you uh, think about motion around a circle, you want to put an origin at the center of the circle, horizontal axis like that, and you think about the angle relative to that horizontal axis. So let's imagine Sal is right here in position one. You would draw a line like that and represent the angle by going from the horizontal axis counterclockwise, like that. So that would be the position theta one. It's just like a position along an x-axis. It's just a position around a circle. Say Sal's gone all the way around and made it to uh, here. You would call that position two. And you'd draw something like that. And to get the position of theta two, you keep, you always go counterclockwise. You would go all the way around like that. And that is theta two, not like this. You go all the way around like that. So here, you would say theta 1 is about, let's assign it a number, let's call it 60 degrees. And theta 2, it's about 180 to about 315 degrees. Okay. So that's how you measure angle. If you want to measure a negative angle, you go this way. So <coughs> counterclockwise is positive. Clockwise from the horizontal axis is negative. That's how we measure angles. So let's see what we can see then if we watch. Sal's actually going backwards, right? So Sal is moving to more and more negative angles because this clock goes clockwise and because positive is counterclockwise. Now in physics, we don't usually use degrees. There is a more natural way to track an angle or to track a fraction of a cycle, and that is with the radian. You may have noticed your calculator has DEG slash RAD, and if it's accidentally an RAD, you get all your problems wrong, right? So that is your calculator switching over to radians. So now you're going to start using radians. So radians, if I had to define them, what I would say is a mathematically natural way to represent an angle. And they're much more than that. We'll be doing more with them through the class. But to get started, just think of it as another way to represent an angle where 360 degrees equals 2 pi radians. So we can, real quick, we can convert these uh, uh, degrees to radians. We could say that first position theta 1 was 60 degrees. 
and just multiply by the conversion factor. You'd want two pi radians on the top, and you'd want 360 degrees on the bottom. I'm just really multiplying by one here, right? So that's going to convert it to, uh, that'd be pi over six, but then the two makes it pi over three. So this position, if this is the origin, is pi over three radians. That angle is pi over three radians. Theta two is 315 degrees. Same thing, multiply it by one. Multiply it by two pi radians over 360 degrees, and that is uh, seven pi over four once you work out the math, right? So this angle all the way around seven pi over four, almost to two pi, right? Two pi is all the way around. Eight pi over four would be um, all the way around, okay? So let's start, let's all start with position. Think about angular position of a problem and try to think about it in radians.